All right, welcome. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this um, this driving code here and how is the code starting to get a little bit ugly here. And you may have started this or or not, but uh, wanted to look through. This was the the kind of shell of the code that I gave you in order to figure out how to drive your little turtle bot around with um, with the servo for the neck, so you could look different ways. And I, I didn't finish the code for you. I've, I've left some giant gaps here. Um, but just to go through it a little bit, let's let's look quickly through the beginning. So we've we've set up, we've got the servo, and we've created the servo, and we've we've set up of all our driving motor pins here. So that's all set up, and and then even the ultrasonic pins here. Um, and then at the, the setup, we of course we so for debugging, we can start our serial monitor so that we can have a look and see at what that inf what information is coming in uh, from the ultrasonic sensor if we want. I connect the head servo and then I set up all the pins for the in and outs for the motors and the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, this stuff we also have done already before. In fact, I made a little comment here. Um, basically, the idea is I need to check out um, the ultrasonic sensor. So that's calculating that distance there. And then I said, uh, now this is just for debugging. I don't actually need this, but I can say um, whether or not we can, um, we're out of range or we've got some distance here. So if you want to clean up your code, you could definitely get rid of that chunk there. Uh, then I ask the question, I say, well, if, if we're close to something, um, that's either the distance is less than 20 centimeters or it's, um, and it's greater than zero, which means it's not uh, in the negative value, which would mean it's, it's absolutely nothing. Well, then I'm going to stop. You can see here, digital right, low, 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 low. And the idea is I, I approach something, I see it, I stop, and then notice I look left, I rate the servo, I wait a second and a half to get there, and then I've said you need some add some code here. So uh, I've stopped, I look left, and if you think about what's going to happen here, I actually have to recalculate the distance. The distance last time the distance was calculated is when I stopped in front of a wall or something. Um, so I'm going to need some code to recheck the distance and then turn maybe if it was going to work. So thinking about how this is going to go, it's going to get pretty ugly pretty quickly. For instance, I need to first of all grab all of this code, let's see down to here, uh, because this is my send out an ultrasonic pulse and then calculate the distance. So my head's turned to the left, I'm now looking in a different direction and I need to see is there a wall there? Is it clear? So if I were to copy that, um, then I could paste this in here. And you see we've got five lines of code, and that's just to calculate the distance. And then I would ask another question, basically something like, if, um, if the distance, the new distance was greater than uh, what did I stop at? 20, uh, greater than 20, or put that pipe pipe there. The distance was less than zero, which would mean it would be completely clear. It, it's not getting a piece of information back. Well, then I would be able to turn in that direction. So I wouldn't have to figure out how I'm going to turn here. So I'm going to have to say, Ooh, turn on the motors, those four pins here. And in fact, that's driving just forward. So if I'm looking to the left, I want to go forward with my right motor. And maybe I want to go backwards with my left motor. So that's going to be a low. And that's going to be a high. And now, if that's not the case, if it turns and looks to the left and it sees something, well, then I don't want to turn. So I'm going to need an else statement there. And then I'm going to have to look the other direction. Right? So I'm going to have to do a go up here and grab that head servo right now. If this is getting confusing and ugly for you, there is a reason for that. It is confusing and ugly. Um, but I'm going to have to look left to look to the right. Oh, let's call it um, I don't know 170. Remember, going to 180 sometimes is a little bit too much. So now I look at the opposite direction, 
And then, of course, I'm going to have to calculate the distance again. There we go. And five more lines of code in order to calculate the distance. And now I have to check and see the distance. Oh, my goodness. It is getting really, really ugly. And one of the reasons it's getting ugly is there's so much code here. It's really not clear as to what's going on. Um, I mean, each line there, but we're getting code inside code inside code and all these if statements. It gets really, really messy. And there is a better way. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly, let's go back here to our beginning spot here. Oh, that's not the one. There it is. Uh, here's my original code. And one way we can simplify our code and make our lives much easier as programmers is to create something called functions. And, and a function is like a job that you do over and over again um, that we can kind of put in one spot and then just use it. It's, it's, we create a worker, a, a specialized little worker that has one particular job. Uh, and you should start thinking about creating functions whenever you see yourself repeating code over and over again. For instance, these five lines of code are all used just to calculate the distance. Uh, and I use them at least three times in my program throughout. So that's 15 lines of code that kind of get messy and, and they're really not descriptive and it looks not very nice. So Here's how we create um, a function. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to put it before your loop. You have to talk about or define the function before you use it. So it's got to be somewhere near the top of your code. Um, in fact, um, often will, people will put it up here. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it just before my setup. Here's my actual program beginning. So I'm going to write a function up here. And a function works a lot like this void setup. Setup is almost a function itself. In this case, I want um, I want to, I'm not going to use the look ahead one here for, for reasons you'll see a little bit later. It's a little more complicated. But for instance, here, I've got stop. I've got four lines of code in order to stop. And I'm going to stop all the time. I'm going to stop and look, stop and go around here, hit the wall, stop. I'm going to stop. So I am going to write a function to stop. So void, just like everything else here, means it doesn't send information back. Uh, and then we got we have to give it a name and give a name that's really descriptive like stop. This stops the robot. Uh, and it's set up just like the setup there or other ones. Basically, this is a name. Uh, the only rules here are that it's got to start with a letter. It's got to use letters and numbers or the underscore. Uh, and it should be very descriptive as to what you are going to do. Now, Arduino oh, nicely finishes that for me. So here is void stop. And we're going to write the code that makes our robot stop. And that's this code right here, which I'm just going to copy. And I'm going to go back and paste it in right there. And to make it nice and pretty, I'm going to tab all these in so it's nice and readable. So I have just created my first uh, own function here called the stop function. And the stop function will do these four things. Now, whenever I, in my code later on, say stop, it's going to say, hey, what do, what do I do? What do we mean by that? Well, I've defined it up here, so it's going to do all of these things. So now I can go down and look at my code and say, well, this, uh, if something is close, well, I'm just going to stop. And I've got a head servo right, and it's got a delay. There's two lines of code there, and that's okay. But uh, why don't I start to clean up some of these things that I do over and over again? Uh, I'm going to stop over and over again. I'm going to drive forward. I'm going to look left. I'm going to look right. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of things. So let's make another one. Void look left. And then I'm going to go 
grab this code down here, copy it so I remember to come back there, and I'm going to paste that in there and make it nice and pretty. Now I can keep my comments there if I want, but now I have a function that's called look left, and it makes the robot look left and waits for it to get there. It's only two lines, so it's not super complicated, but it's going to actually make my code infinitely more readable as well because I am going to now say this. If I something is close, I'm going to stop. I'm going to look left. And you can see here that we can now keep going with a bunch of this code. Um, so you might want to get a drive forward code. You might want to get a turn code. You may want to get uh, all sorts of different things that are useful to you. Now, there's one more that I want to look. It's a little more complicated. Um, so far, these functions are just jobs. They basically say, do this, and then we can forget about it. And it's, it's, it's very much like you're kind of outsourcing your code to a function. This function has one job, and it does it really well, and it's nicely named there. Uh, we have one more that you're going to use all over and over again. Uh, and this is that get distance, like these five lines of code. The difference being here, and well, let's 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 grab it. Uh, I'm going to make a new function here called void. Well, hold on a second. Uh, well, let's say void to start. Uh, I'm going to call it just look ahead. There we go. And it is going to do all of these things. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to grab all of this code. So the look ahead function will also print out some information if we want. So you've got now 10 lines of code there at least. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here and tab, 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 tab. Make it nice and pretty there. There we go. So now I've taken that really complicated one and wrapped it into this look ahead um, variable. Now, the difference being is that this one actually calculates a piece of information that my main program needs. It needs to, it, this has to make some decisions based on what this little look ahead does. So we actually have to send back um, that distance. Right? That's really the only thing we care about is the end in the distance. So the very last line of code here I'm going to say is return distance. And basically what you're, you're doing is think of, um, think of this as you're, you're doing a bunch of math stuff and you've got a buddy on the side and they um, have a calculator. So you say, you know what, I need some numbers. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of numbers. I need you to do some calculations for me and then tell me the answer at the end. I don't care what you do uh, or how you get there. I just want the right answer at the end. And that's kind of what you've done here with this function. Is the look ahead function is your buddy on the side with the calculator. And the main you are the main program describing what's supposed to happen. And you say, ooh, I need to know how far it is. Uh, here's the info. Can you calculate? The distance ahead and they will do a bunch of calculations and then they will tell you or send you back or return that answer um, you don't care about all of their calculations and what they did all you care about is the answer at the end so this return distance um, is the, the the slightly different part from my stop and my look at left and all that sort of stuff so there's one more thing we need to add here, this or alter here. This void um, is, is put there because most functions that we've got so far do not send back any information. They, they have a void. But if you are going to send information back, you have to let the computer know that. In this case, I want to know the distance in centimeters, which would be an integer. So instead of void look ahead, I'm going to say int look ahead because I am going to send back an integer to the main program and that's that's really what that first part is there notice void setup setup doesn't send anything back void loop loop doesn't send anything back but this distance does so now 
I can, in my main program here, get the distance, I can grab all of that stuff, and I can say, just look ahead. Oops, I put an underscore there. Um, and this will become that number, that returned distance here. That This function just turns into that number. Now, that unfortunately back here doesn't help us out because later on it wants to know what distance is. And just like you didn't get to know what your buddy was doing behind the scenes when they did some calculations and all their paperwork and stuff like that, all you got to know was the distance. Um, I need to uh, kind of let the main program know what that's going to be stored as. And, and it can be the same word, but here I'm going to create a new variable because I haven't made it in here. I'm going to just make it a variable called distance. That's the first thing I have to do. And then I can say it equals to... <clears throat> whatever my buddy calculated over there. And now I can ask if the distance is less than or greater than, stop and look left. So you can see already those, you know, 15, 20 lines of code that were getting really, really ugly are starting to clean up very nicely. Uh, and it also is much more readable, especially if you choose really good function names. Uh, you can say, hey, I want to look ahead and store that in distance. If the distance is less than this, Stop, look left. This is very, very um, logical. Now, uh, one thing I do notice is that stop is in giant red letters. Um, and I feel like that is because that Arduino already wants to, um, already has that as a function, a stop function. So it's giving me a little problem. Notice the digital right is a built-in one. The delay is a built-in one. It turns red. So I wonder, um, I should call this like a stop robot. There we go. And that turns black. Uh, so that stop is a reserved function because it's already been used. It's already defined to do something else. So let's make sure we don't do that. And I'll go down here and I will update that. So this is the stop robot now. That looks a lot better. So by adding functions to your program, you are going to, first of all, clean up some code. Um, especially when you do repeated things, it's going to be magnificent and make your life a lot easier.